given the following functions, f of x equals 1 minus x over x, and g of x equals 1 over 1 plus x squared, we want to find the following, and then we have a and b. Okay, so composite functions. I know that these are composite functions because this is the notation for composite functions, so you just have to kind of identify that. However, me personally, I don't like this type of notation. There's another notation for composite functions, which are down here. They are equivalent to each other. So just know that the first letter that they give you is the outer function of the composite function, and the second letter that they give you is the inner function. Okay, so um, placement matters here. So I'm just going to rewrite these in the notation that I like. So this would be g of f of x. And clearly now we can see that g is the outer function and the f of x is the inner function. And then for the second one, it looks like it's the same thing, but now they just give me a number, but still it would be g of f of two now. Okay, and clearly f of two is the inner function and the g is the outer function. Okay, so with composite functions, you always work from the inner function to the outer function, and you can tell which one is which by looking at the parentheses. The one that's the most inside the parentheses is the inner function, and we just kind of went over how we can tell the difference between them. So for A, let's get down to it. So for A, I'm just going to write the notation that I like. It's G F of X. So now, for the first thing, I'll put a number one here, you're going to plug in the input, which is usually a number, for the inner function, and use your algebra and solve. However, for this, my inner function, which is f of x, is literally, there's no number input, and they told us that f of x was 1 minus x over x. So 1 minus x over x. And, I mean, technically I can simplify this, uh, but... They didn't, I mean, they left it in this type of notation, so I'm just going to keep it like that. So this is my answer for the first part, and the cool thing with uh, composite functions is you take that answer, which is now your new input that you solved for, and you plug it in for the outer function. So the outer function here was the g. So g of, plug in your answer for what... Uh, the function is 1 minus x over x. That's a little, it's a little ugly. Which means that any time that I see an x value, um, I need to plug in what I need. So for this one, it would be 1 minus x over x. And square that because that's what the g value says. So let's see. This would be 1 over 1 plus the x value is now this. So 1 minus x over x, and you square that. Now, if you want to simplify, you can. Um, just for the sake of this, I will keep it like this. But for this, just know that you would have to, you know, 1 minus x over x times it twice. And do your little math here, all right? Um, yes. So I'm just going to get rid of that. So this is your answer for the first part. And just know that all of these notations are exactly the same. So you could say this, which equals this, which is the same thing as g of f of x, which is the same thing as g composed with f at x. They all mean the same. So this is the answer for the first part. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing, but now we have a number. So this is going to be even easier. We love it when there's numbers. We don't really like it when it's just an x. You'll see in, in two seconds. I'm going to put b up here. Okay, so we need g of f of 2. I'm going to use the notation that I like because I can clearly see what is the inner function. We do that first. So 1, f of 2 is wherever I see a 2 or wherever I see an x for my f function, I'm going to plug in a 2. So this, I'm going to put a 2 here, and this, I'm going to put a 2 here. So it's going to be 1, oh, it's going to be 
1 minus 2 over 2 and simplify. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1 divided by 2, so I get negative 1 half. Okay, now I use this output, this answer, and use it as my input for the outer function, which was g. So number 2, I'm going to say g of negative 1 half. And wherever there was a x value, there was only one here, you're going to plug in a negative 1 half. You see why we like numbers? It's easier because then we can just solve it. So this would be equal to 1 over 1 plus negative 1 half squared. And now I'll just say up here, negative 1 half squared is the same thing as multiplying it two times. And negative times a negative is a positive. 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times 2 is 4. So this whole thing would be equal to 1 fourth. So I can say g of negative 1 over 2 equals 1 divided by 1 plus 1 fourth, which is basically 1.25, right, if we added these together. Um, so I'll do that, right? 1 over 1.25, and then if you want, you can divide these and put it into a fraction. It's up to you. Um, you get 0.8, so that's 8 over 10. Four-fifths, same thing. So we will say g of negative one-half, which is the same thing as uh, g of f of 2, which is the same thing as this thing, just equals four-fifths. Look at that. And that is your answer for the second part. All right, they don't really say um, simplify, but I did it for you guys anyway. Okay, so that's it. So I'll just say this is four fifths over here, just so that we have it at a couple of different places. Okay, so guys, this one was easy. And I'm going to check A and B because I like to see checks. Okay, so A and B are done. This one was pretty easy. Tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, if you liked this video and you thought it was helpful, click the like button, um, subscribe to the channel, and tell your friends, all right? Because we can help them too in math and also in physics. We got physics videos as well. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, it's been a pleasure. And I will see you guys all in the next lesson. Bye-bye.